Okay, in this lesson, we are going to actually create a automation or workflow from scratch, literally a blank sheet of paper. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to automations. And when you click on automations, you're going to go to, you're going to get to this screen and we're going to create a new workflow and you're going to start from scratch. This is going to open up the blank workflow area and I always like to start from the top so I like to name my workflow a meaningful name so that it makes sense to me when I look for it later so here I'm just gonna call this our test workflow or training and then the first thing I'm gonna just kind of explain to you kind of all this stuff that you see up here this is where you're building the workflow settings is really not many of you will need to modify these settings. You can set this conversation as marked as red if you want. And when you know this, this is toggle this if you want the conversation that will interact will be marked as red. This just um, defines in the conversation tab if somebody replies to it. Let's say they have an auto reply, it'll mark it as already complete. Enrollment history is a really good feature for you to understand. So when you're testing your workflows or something goes wrong or amiss, you can see what the history is of the actions that have happened in terms of who's joined your particular workflow. And then your execution logs, this is also going to be history that defines when somebody has entered in it. So these are really great once you've published your workflows and you want to see what's going on with somebody who's entered into the workflow and actually the steps, how they execute it. Draft, everything always starts in draft unless it's a workflow that we've done that we normally release our workflows published. If they're part of our basic pillars, if it's something that you need to customize, we will modify it. We will release it in a draft mode. If you want to actually start using it, you need to make sure that your automations are in publish. All right, so starting from the top, you're always going to be asking yourself in your design, we talked about the fact that you need to determine what's gonna get somebody into the automation, what's the event or action that's going to occur that is going to get someone automatically into your automation. So let's like take a look at what's available to you. You've got available to you Pretty much any type of transaction that happens at the contact record, you can use it as a trigger. You can use a birthday reminder. You can use some, some elements of the contact changing as a trigger. Really, any contact, any field or um, item or element that you see here that's a contact related, you can use that as a starting point for getting someone automatically in the trigger. One of the most common contact elements that I use is contact tag. I usually use this because I tag a contact and put that tag on them or that sort of identifier. And once that tag is added to the contact record, that will then trigger an automation. You can, however, use any of these items to trigger an automation. You can also trigger an automation based on an event. Inbound webhook is something a little bit advanced. We'll do some future training on how to use webhooks. But let's say you have a phone call and the status of the phone call changes. You can do that. Email events. This will, when you select email events, this is really going to give you the different types of email events that are available to you. And you can then filter by the events and then here, these are the different types of emails. So if somebody clicks on an email, they complained, opened, or it bounced, you can do a trigger statement based on that. Other types of events that you can do, one of the most popular event types that we use is when a form is submitted or survey is submitted, when a funnel or a page view is submitted, you can do that as well. We also have, if you're uploading videos in the system, you can also trigger based um, on video tracking, video lead form. So if you're doing Facebook ads and somebody fills out a Facebook lead form, you can do that. But most popular trigger events that we use in our automations to you are form submitted and survey submitted. 
that's our most popular. Then you also have when somebody books an appointment and the status changes of the appointment, you can start that trigger. Customer book the appointment themselves, you can start that trigger. We do a lot of trigger uh, starts with opportunities, also known as trips or projects in the system. We do a lot of changing and starting our automations with here. Unless you're doing some specific, you probably won't be using any of these. If you are using and you're in our premier mode and you have affiliates, you can um, manage the affiliates. Anytime an affiliate is created, you can start some sort of trigger there. Courses, if you have premier, you can start the course, any sort of course activities. So if somebody has started a course completed, this is great for if they're doing reviews and you would like to kick off the review process, doing a testimonial, this is really good. Payments, invoicing, and payments received, an order from a sales page or a funnel, you can start here. And then any sort of documents, so that relates to our proposals. Any um, subscriptions that have started, that can also start here as well. Instagram events, so if someone has commented on a post, and this really relates to a business page only, Facebook only allows you to interact with Facebook business page related events. And then if you have community access, you can automatically, once a group access has been granted, you can start a trigger here. And then also if you have memberships and communities, you can also do certificates. So most popular triggers that you're going to do are most likely going to be tags. You're also going to probably want to do maybe some order forms, like maybe somebody submitted an order. You can do that. An invoice has been paid. Those are common ones. A, another common ones are forms submitted, um, surveys submitted. Those would be common triggers. I'm going to do this one based on a form submitted. And once you do the trigger, if you don't define it further, this would kick off on every form submitted. So it's not likely that you want your triggers to happen when every type of form you want to then add a criteria. So that's what this filter is, it adds a criteria. So this would then say when form is equal to the name of the form. So if you've created a custom form, let's say you've created a webinar and you have a form associated with that webinar, you're going to want to select. So like we have a webinar registration form. If you have our premiere, we've already got this funnel, uh, this form and funnel and all of those steps built for you. But this would be an example of what you do. Let's say you do a destination interest form and that you want to start an automation there, that's also a good use case for forms and surveys. All right, so I'm just gonna select this one just as an example. I'm gonna save the trigger. One of the things that I also like to do is make sure that I name the trigger. So let me just show you the difference. This just says form submitted. But what if I forget, and I don't remember what this trigger is about. I like to name each of my steps so that I don't have to actually click on it and no learn what it is. So this says form submitted equal webinar registration. So then I'm gonna save that and there you see the name. So I like to give everything a specific name so that again, I can just see it and it all makes sense to me. On your design, then the next thing that we talked about before is after you define the trigger is, do you want this to be delivered or you want this workflow to start immediately or do you want it to wait? And so your next thing that you're going to do is you're going to execute either a wait statement or you're going to just deliver, let's say an email or a text message or do whatever action that you want. And so once you've defined the trigger, you are at this point able to then define a series of different actions that you can take. So these are contact related actions. These are pretty self-explanatory in terms of what you can do. You've got communication actions that you can do, which are usually the most common types of actions that you all will be taking. You can send an email, send an SMS uh, text, you can, if you have Slack installed in, for your internal team, you can do that. You can automatically do a call. You can do a voicemail, send a messenger. 
note that if you send a messenger, you'd have to be in active communication with a person for the messenger to deliver because that is a restriction of Facebook. You can send yourself an internal notification or your team a send uh, notification. This right here, send review requests, is how you send a review request to your clients if you want them to automatically complete either a Facebook review or a Google My Business review. This interactive messenger is going to be coming soon. This is in beta. If you see anything in beta, this means it's coming soon. This would require, this is grayed out because you didn't have a starting point as a Facebook comment. So that's just to let you know that. Then you've got send data. This is really some advanced in terms of webhooks integration like with Zapier or an external um, system. But one of the most common send datas is Google Sheet. If you see this little star, this little um, crown here, this is a premium action and there is some cost associated with executing. It's a pretty nominal cost. I think it's like a cent per action, a cent or two cents per action. So it's not going to break the bank unless, of course, you're doing thousands and thousands of transactions. Internal tools, these are going to be internal um, actions that you can do. These are a little bit more advanced. Most of the time, you guys are going to be just sending a email or a text. But you can do, if you have some advanced um, skills in terms of doing if-then statements or most common internal tool is waiting. So let's say I somebody submits a webinar registration and I want to wait, I can set that wait. But normally when we have a trigger of some sort, we want an immediate action and then we wait. So like if someone submitted a form, I'm going to want to confirm their receipt of the form immediately. So maybe I want to add a tag immediately once the form has been submitted. So this is really what you can do um, for internal Workflow AI, this is another advanced, this is really integration with ChatGPT. We will be doing some training in the future on how to connect your ChatGPT to um, the system and then actually leverage ChatGPT or OpenAI for having AI conversations or AI actions on your workflow. Opportunity, again, would be trips and or projects. You can do that. You can also do transactional. You can run a Stripe charge immediately. You can send an invoice. You can send some documents. You can also do some marketing, analytics, and affiliates. So for this simple training, what we're going to do is we're going to just do an email. So we are going to do communication, and we're going to send an email. And here, what we're going to do is just like with the with the trigger, we want to give the action a name. So I'm going to say, if this is going to be email number one, number one, send confirmation about form submission. And so you can then put a subject. If you see an asterisk, this means that this is a required or if you have created an email template, you can select from any of the email templates that we already have available to you. So we actually, I believe we have a template. So we have a webinar email registration. And so when you use a template, what you notice is the subject is going to pull in the subject that we've already established. You can change the subject if you want. It's going to automatically bring in the content for that particular item when you are using a template. So if you don't want to use a template, you can just X this out. Go up to here and say none. And then you can actually write your, te your template, write your content from scratch. So remembering in the design training I talked about, it's really, I don't like to do this on the fly. I like to define all my content first so I can just cut and paste and put my content in here. So another way of doing that is, is you can create a content first for your emails. If it's a recurring type of email that you're going to use, you may want to create a template so that you can just then pull it in here. So for the purposes of this training, I'm just going to write a quick little item. I'm going to explain to you what these items are here. 
you can use custom values and pull in the value for the custom value. The difference between a custom value and a custom field is a custom value is unique to your company and a custom field is unique to your client. So for a custom value here, this is going to be client data. So I'm going to want to put their first name. So it can automatically pull in the first name of the person that is here. And then I'm going to say test email content or training. And then one of the things I also like to do is I like to not have to put my signature. So one of the things you can use is you can use user and this is going to be you as the writer. I like to just use the signature box. So this means whoever is assigned to the client, if you've got a VA assigned to your clients, it'll be their signature. If it's you who's assigned to your clients, it'll be your signature that's been established at the staff record. And then this, all of them you need to do is, so if you want to add an attachment, you can do that as well. So if this is a standard attachment, this is great for, let's say you are doing a, a destination guide and you want to send that destination guide out as a part of the email for everyone um, who submits a interest in or submits the form. You can attach that guide right here and it's going to attach to the email. So you can attach, add an attachment to any email as a part of the workflow. And then you can send yourself, I'm gonna actually just attach, let's just say I'm going to attach this image right here. And then I'm going to send myself an email. I'm gonna send my, I'm gonna save this action. I always like to save. You notice I didn't put a subject, so I'm going to put test email. And then you can also use custom fields here. So I'm going to say, put my first name here. So test email for training for my name, right? You can also add emojis if you want to. You just have to copy in and paste the emoji. I'm going to click save. And then here I've got the name and then let's say I want to send myself an example of what this looks like. I want to send myself a test email. I can put my email address here and I can actually see what it looks like. And then click send test mail and then you'll get this message here. It'll tell you that um, please check conversation tab to confirm. So this will actually show up in the conversation tab. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So going to also notice this is pulsating. This means that you want to save the workflow. So just because you've saved this particular task, does it mean that the workflow is saved? So you want to make sure that you always save the, the workflow as well. So then I'm just going to duplicate this so you can see that that test email came to me. We're just going to go to the conversations tab right here and you can see that <coughs> you can actually go to contacts and you can um, search for the contact and see or you can, if you're sending it to yourself you can actually go um, here and I can see that this test email went here. Um, and this, you can see that this has a little arrow and that's because I have a do not disturb on here for email. So here, if I take that off and then I send it to myself again, I'll get it this time. So that's something you want to test too. So let's just kind of look at this now in the enrollment history. We don't have anyone, so we didn't test anyone in the enrollment. But one of the things that I also like to do when I'm building a workflow is I like to test and add myself to it, but we'll do that a little bit later. So I'm going to actually send this again as a test email, just so I can see what it looks like. And then there it is again, and this time there's no error. So I can see 
that not only do I have the test email content, my signature came in, and then also this attachment came in into the email. So all of that you can set up in your email workflows. In our automations that we've done for you, we obviously don't have the attachments, but you can go through the templates and add attachments if you have some standard attachments that you want to do. Next thing is, is that you want to then wait. If you're doing a series, it's likely that you want to wait until a particular time to do the next action. So what you want to do is you want to establish a wait statement and then do wait. And then you can define how long you want to wait. We're not going to do any complex waiting um, here. We'll, um, I've got some knowledge article that explains this whole wait function and all the different types of waits that you can do. For the sake of this, we're just going to do a simple wait one day. I'm going to change the name to wait one day just so I know that this is waiting one day. And then what's the next thing that you want to do? Do you want to send another email? Email number two, do you want to send a text message? So you're just going to keep repeating this process until you are done with your um, series. So here you can establish another email. You can send an email again. We're just going to start from the top. I'm going to say email number two, test email two. And then we're going to say test email number two. And then you literally are just going to keep going according to whatever your instructions are. And then you're going to uh, just say hi. And I'm going to say first name again. So I always like to do first name, comma. This is a test for email number two. And then I'm going to include my signature again. So I'm going to show you how if you don't want to have to do all of this every single time, we can actually copy any steps or multiple steps. So I'm going to do the signature block again. I'm going to save this action. And now I have this second email. So let's say I've got five emails in my series and I don't want to add a wait statement and an email over and over again. What I can do is I can copy all actions from here. This is going to copy these two actions and I can copy this here. And this way I don't have to, I could just change the name and make this email number three, email number three, and then I can change my content. I can copy and paste my content over and I don't have to add this high and the signature again. I like to do that so that it just makes building it a lot quicker, particularly when I have multiple emails in a series. So I'm just going to save that action and you can see it says email two, email three. And then I would just keep repeating that until I had the emails that I wanted. Now, the last thing that you want to just ask yourself is one of the things that we designed was the goal is we said, okay, what's the purpose of this automation? Is it just to communicate information? Do we want to call the action to happen? If it's just to communicate information, the only thing that you're wanting, going to do is you're going to build it out. You're going to click publish and then you're going to click save. That's going to save the automation. But then the last thing that you always want to do when you build something is test it. So what I want to do is I want to actually test that somebody is going to get into the automation and they're going to actually um, go through the steps. So what I would do is I would actually submit a submission on this form, watch it go and make sure it's in. a little cheat sheet is you could just add, if you just want to check to see if the emails go out, you just add yourself as a test to the workflow and then run test. And then when you hit enrollment history, you can see that this person has been added. And then you can hit this little view execution and you can see that this was added to the workflow. This email was sent and it's waiting. You can also look at the builder and you can see that this person that you added is waiting here. All right, so that's how you test. The other thing that I would just say um, for you to consider, maybe you should have considered this in your design is when you have this event occur, do you want to add some sort of tag to that person so you know that this person submitted a form? So one of the things that I always like to do is when, they, when I have a trigger, I always add some tag 
so I know that this happened. Another sort of nice to have too is, is I also like to add notes to the contact record. So I'm going to add, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to add a contact tag and then I'm going to say, we already have a tag here that's webinar um, registration. So I'm just going to add that just so you can see that. If you don't have the tag and you want to add it, so let's say I'm going to do test tag here and it's not in the system, I can add that test tag and you see it's there. I'm going to click save. What didn't I do? I didn't name it. So I'm going to say add tag equals test tag. So again, I want to see that. Another thing that I like to do too is I like to add a note to the contact record. So I'm going to add a add note to the contact record and then I'm going to do add test note for form completion. And then I'm just going to write this note. Um, and then here is great to use like contact information is um, actually you already know the contact. I, one of the things I like to use is right now. So I know what the date of the note. So that right now, I'm going to say, show you that again. This right now allows you to date stamp something. So here I want the month date and I also want the time. Maybe you've got something that's time specific. I want the time in AM format. And then I'm going to say uh, completed form. And I'm going to say webinar registration so I know form and click save action. So this, these are great segmenting um, tips for you to do. So when you build an automation, ask yourself when you were designing it, do you want to segment or do you want to know that this action happened with this client in the past? So to do that, you'll, or do I want to find this client? Do I want to create a smart list for this client and send them future information? Or do I want to just have a note on the client record here? So just don't forget to save. You don't have to republish. It'll just stay published here. But now I want to test that. This is going to actually add the tag and it's going to actually do the note. I'm going to run the test again for myself since I did it after the fact. So just also note that if you do something, let's say you make a modification to a workflow after somebody's gone through it, it's not going to automatically update that contact. It, this person is here, so I have to run that person through again. What I will tell you is this won't execute because you can only have one person, a person in an automation at one time. So that test is not going to operate. So let me just fix that. Got myself out of the automation. Let me just explain that again. So here, you know, I added myself and it didn't, it didn't add because I was already active in the automation. So you need to make sure that the person isn't already in the automation if you're doing testing. So that usually becomes a problem or an issue when you're doing your own testing and you're in the automation. So I'm going to run the test again. Now when I click automation, you see I've now entered in again here. Now you see that the contact add contact tag has been, that note has been added. And if you click on the contact record, it'll pull the contact info, the, con the, the contact directly up. And then if you scroll down to tags, you'll see that that test tag has been here. And also this uh, GM registration has been added to their record. And then the email was sent again to them. So. Those are, that's really what you need to do to create a custom automation. Pretty basic for you to create an email, text message, send pretty common workflows that you all want to do is send an email when an event occurs, either an appointment or in a, a form submission, contact change, a new contact, that kind of stuff. Let me know in comments if there is a particular trigger that you're in, um, interested in. And then also, let me just remind you, if you have any questions about this, you can always go to our chat um, widget. And let me show you, you can always go to the chat and let's say you have a question about workflow 
like how to create automation or just type the word automation and all of our um, questions will come up associated with automation. So guide for client booking workflow, um, automating, automating, um, automating opportunities, how to set up automated calls and uh, voicemail. So um, automating opportunity, like any, like if you have something specific that you want to do, like if you want to understand triggers, you can type in the word trigger. So don't forget that you've got um, help right here at your fingertip list of workflow triggers that's available to you. So always start with help if you're stuck in building an automation and you want to, you can't figure out how to do something, ask the help system. And then if you want to get in touch with somebody live, don't, all, don't forget that you can do that by getting in touch right here. Let me know if you have any comments or questions and we'll talk to you soon.